Hello, everybody. This is Wildland Acres, and let me figure out how to put my thing in. This is, we're playing Hunt and Jump, and we're going to be sorting some fulls today. So we start here. This is the welcome screen for Hunt and Jump. It is a very com, like, Parma doesn't want to call it a complex horse dynamics game, but at the same time, there's definitely a lot of complexities to it. There's not one way to play it. It's not one goal. One of the reasons why I love it so much, because you can have fun defining it for you. Some people make trouble horses. Some people try to get the best horses ever. I like enjoying finding different breeding strategies for my horses and I love trying to get good quality primitive looking horses while having fun with it. So here we go. Every month you can breed your horses like and but at the 28th of every month all of those foals will go away to stop the servers from being backlogged by horses being left in pasture breeding continuously and having lots of horses when people quit the game. It's like, we like our servers. So every month foals which aren't in pasture get deleted so that we need to get the foals out of the pasture. And I've realized like, I said, mentioned that I do three different breeding strategies. I like doing classic bootstrap, line breeding and uh, uh, hybrid breeding. These probably mean nothing to you. I will throughout the videos, I'll probably explain a little further and I will give you examples, but I've realized that lined breeding, which is each horse, like the horse has an even pedigree where every, where you have a line, actually let me go through. So let's say third gen pasture. These are third generation horses. So each one will have two ancestors before going to a foundation created horse. So there's its parent, there's its grandparent, and then we have like foundation horse, which is basically like best pretzel and guardian pride and twisty, they were all created by the game. You go to this thing, you can create a horse. Right now, there is a very special event where you can, uh, like it, each of these days, you can create a special horse from the game. But each one of these are going to be considered foundation or gen one horses. So line breeding is, you're trying to keep each of these created horses on the same line in the pedigree for your horses. It's like I real like I do do line breeding. Most of my pastures are taken up by line breeding, but at the same time, I've realized that I don't give my line breeding nearly as much uh, love as the others because it create because they use a lot more space and time to manage. And we're getting towards the end of the month, so. Time to go into pastures and take some foals out. I am gonna go, oh, here are some of my classic bootstrap horses. Here's an example of a dressed up horse. If you guys see any horses you would like me to dress up for a Halloween episode, please comment, let me know. Um, there are lots of things I'll probably be showing you the tack pack system and some of the other things later right now with the whole discussing about the game and what I'll probably not do that in this episode have some fun stuff for next episode because I do not consider this a comp complicated game but there are so many things you can get into if you wish so today we'll get on to our Gen 2 horses, we have our, in pastures, you'll have 
a certain number of stallions you can have. I have two stallions. This guy, Silver Ghost, is pretty cool because he's, I believe he's the only stud I use, which is not one that I run myself. So I'm not sure if I should mention the names of other players who breed these horses in these videos yet, but it's like, he is a, he is a very cool horse. Like props to the person who bred them. Um, and here are, I can have 60 mares in this pasture. Right now I have 26 because eventually I'll have, like once all these horses age out of the game at between 17 or 19 years old, they can get older, but at that point they're too old for breeding. So I take them out of the pasture. Um, once the these guys die out, I will turn this into my sixth generation pasture because I do not need to worry about more pastures, but I've got more six gens than can fit in my sixth generation pasture. So it's time to reduce, reuse, recycle. But okay, that sounds very weird with horses. But here we go. Here are the mares. A boomerang, TARDIS, Cat Guardian. It's like we have horses with various genes going on here. Like we have normal genes. This is showing two Yumalan genes. So black base horse, brown, dun. It's got flax and pangree, but that only those only show up on chestnut horses, so you won't be able to see. Dun factor promoter one, white ten, LP is Splash and Patton, the more Patton you've got, the more spots. So you get a very spotty horse there. Some of these horses have fantasy genes, which are used in a realistic manner, but they're still like this horse has jellyfish. You don't actually see real life horses with jellyfish. I don't really consider myself a hardcore fantasy breeder, but as you'll see, there are plenty of fantasy horses in this uh, pasture along with non-fantasy horses. This here, like you see the skull on this one, asparagus here. This is not jeans. This is decorations from a Halloween tack pack. So this is one of the things that could be used to dress up a horse. So yeah, feel if you see any horses here you want me to dress up, please let me know because it's getting close to Halloween and eventually I finally get to the foals. These foals have not been open yet because I have not given my even line horses nearly enough love. Now I could, okay, I did see this one. This one was the best in my second grade pasture and he's a stallion. So I'll need to look into him because I actually need a new stallion for my third gen pasture. One of my boys is 19, which means he won't be able to be bred next year, or, uh, to breed horses next year. If he even survives rollover, which is when the game shuts down for a half hour at the end of the month and any horse over 17 might not make it. So yeah, I pressed the little, I need to get better at explaining what I'm doing. I press the little check mark here which means all these foals are checked. Go to the thing, select the barn. I'm gonna go to my primary barn. I have enough room for these guys. And so then you go to the bottom of the thing and there are no more foals. So there's no foals in this pasture to worry about aging out, out on, the eight, on the 28th. There's still like all my other gens, but these guys will be safe. Now let's go and, oh, please don't mind that. My lizard is having fun. Um, back, back to business. Now let's sort these horses so we know which horses to take them to, which barns to send them to, and then we can do another barn, another video. So you'll see all of these, um, like it, these denote horses in a barn. 
So if you click on it, you'll take it, you know, it'll generate an image, generating a star map. So this horse probably has a nexus gene in it, which is a um, fantasy gene. But since one of my studs has nexus, that's not too surprising. He has two green cream genes, so you can't tell anyway, but he does have fantasy genes. If I go to his panel and genetic test him, you can probably see he has a lot go more going on than just being cream. So you see he has two copies of Dunn Factor Promoter. He has done, so if he was not cream, he would be all stripey. But he is cream, so you once again can't see it. I, I try to get Dumb Factor Promoter in my lines, but they always either have cream or non done ones. So I guess I could, like, if I really like this guy, I could genetically modify him, which is another thing in this game, which I will probably go into later when I, when I do find a horse that I want to genetically modify. But yeah, so he goes. Dun Factor Promoter adds extra stripes to the Dun Coat. And I'm very bad at breeding horses that actually show it. But yeah, Axiom, so if you have, there's an X, which means he does have the Nexus Fantasy Gene. And once again, Fantasy Genes. These can't be offered for sale, like horses with Fantasy Genes have to be sold in auction, but I very rarely sell a horse unless somebody messages me and asks me if they want to buy a horse from me. So it really doesn't matter. But yeah, we have these horses with flags. This means that they have not been shown. Horses and pastures can't be shown. So I make sure that I show all my horses for the week because you can show horses twice every week. It gives them points. And honestly, if you show your horses enough, this gives you your income. Like I very rarely sell horses anymore. And yet I just keep horses in my stable and they give me an income. And since I show my ho horses before moving foals out, I can just click on all of these horses. Uh, with flags and we can run testing on them because one of the things I like testing horses to try to find good quality horses to put in for the next line because honestly I don't have space or time or clicking wanting for breeding all the horses I produce or so and also since horses which aren't being bred like spade or gelded horses they're the ones which are your money makers for your barn which I don't want to sell horses for money I want to sell horses if I want to sell horses because I think they'll help someone else. I don't want to sell horses because I feel like I need to because that just seems weird. Well, it doesn't, but that's just not in my business model anymore because I show enough horses to more than supply me with my income needs, which is definitely something that takes a little while to build up. But if you treat your show horses well, they'll treat you well. I don't even remember why I got on that tangent, but oh yeah. So I want to find the best horses for breeding and ideally I'll only have, so like most, most of these foals were actually stallions this year. Most of them are probably going to un, uh, end up as stallions that I just put in a sh uh, show barn for in case I need to, when, in case I need a stallion or somebody looks through my barns and sees that they want the stallion, then I can put the stallion through extra testing to see if I think the stallion should be used as a stallion. But until then, I'll probably, like, I will go to these testing things. Sometimes if you don't click genetic testing first, genetic testing will go away. So I'll put genetic testing on these horses. So we get smoky black, buckskin, griots, silver bays. Buckskin, Roan Dunn, like we'll get to see what some of these turn out later. Okay, 
But if we do genetic testing, surprisingly, it didn't go away this time. Performance testing. So this will see how well this horse would work as a show pony, like which grade show it would go into. And uh, when you do the performance testing, your the horse goes to someone called Doris. And Doris has some wonderful reactions to your horses depending on their level. So here's an 11.2. Doris carefully examines your prospect. She seems mildly impressed with the horse and marks the grade down quickly. Very dismissive, friendly nod. Now this is a Gen 2 pasture. So these will be Gen 3 foals. So you shouldn't have anything too low, but let me see. Here's a 10.6. So Doris carefully considers your prospect. So she considers instead of examines. Not that, like if, like, if you get like some scores, like Doris faints and thinks the, and says that your horse would do better as a llama if you get a really bad score. Like those are hilarious, but unfortunately with how I breed my horses, I usually don't get those. But I will say those are hilarious whenever somebody shares that they got something like that. Like, I love those responses. Just that's not how I breed my horses, but that's okay. You can breed your horses so many different ways on this game, as long as you're not hurting or taking advantage of others. So one of the really fun things of the game. So we did performance testing, now breeding advice. This is something which is often scary for a lot of people, honestly, because this, the horse will, uh, the, the game will put the horses through the engine to, this, to see their hidden uh, genetic stats, or not genetic stats, their hidden breeding stats. And if they're not uh, near the same quality as, either of their parents, they'll automatically be gelded in spade and you'd have to pay to genetically modify your horse to make it readable again. So it is scary, but since I honestly hope that most of these turn into show ponies because I do not need too many more readers. Uh, like uh, I am quite happy to put them through breeding advice. One of the reasons why I, though I will say I'm one of those people who I, I put through breeding advice before seeing the foals, because once you see a really pretty horse, it's really, really hard to put them through breeding advice. But you see, I only had one, two, three horses um, fail breeding advice, which means that my mares and stallions are pretty even and I had them in pastures meant that the longer your mares are in pasture, the higher in their range of breeding they will throw for stats. So yeah, this means I have more work cut out for me though. So let's run a breeding inspection. I would be shocked if these aren't all blue and a papered horses. If I get a star or a gold, that's whole, that would be amazing. That'd be like once in a blue moon sort of thing. I've never had a third gen gold or star. I did very rarely get fourth gen gold or star, which is a higher breeding level. I am just throwing you guys into this game. If you watch enough of my videos, you'll probably understand. So there's various breeding categories to kind of lump your horses into. For stallions, there's um, show only, which is not good enough to breed according to the game. Worse than a good foundation than a good foundation horse. C is like normal foundation level. Red is like higher foundation level. Blue is better than any normal foundation could be and star is above blue till the breeding quality cap. With mares, it's similar, but it's failed, yellow, red. Okay, I think I mixed these up. So the stallions are show only, C, B, 
a star. Mares are failed yellow, red, blue, gold. So let's see, if we get any reds, they will be the ones which didn't make it. Any reds or bees. If we get golds and stars, I'm gonna be screaming. Um, they're probably all gonna be blues, but let's just test them anyway. So let me see. We got a B, which is not a horse to keep for breeding. A's. Okay, another B. This is kind of sad how many B's I've been getting. Blues, blues, red. I'm pretty sure I remember that one specifically getting spayed. So similar to what I expected. Now to see the horses again after the testing and moving out the spade and gelded horses. We come back here and now I want to go specifically to the mares because these are the ones that I want to sort to see which ones I'm breeding but want to put into my future breeding barn or not like the stallions. I'll probably just throw into show ponies for now until I decide I want to look through stallions for a said prospect. I am which will probably be a future video because I need a new third gen to be honest. I might be going for a two-year-old horse so he can breed next year, but I might look at these ones too, try to find the best horse possible because I know I can, it's like trying to find the highest stud possible is a really cool thing, but that will be a different video here. It is weird playing the game in videos. And I am info dumping too much. I am sorry, folks. So let's look at our first one, our Silver Gria. So let's play. So this horse will be black based. They need just one capital E. They have no A's. They've done. They have two kinds of sooty. So this will be a darker horse. They have silver. Dense feminine, which is like sooty, but extra sooty. One copy of satin, but since it's lowercase letters, you need two copies of this to show, so you won't see that. They have a fancy splash. They have Appaloosa pattern, but they don't have Appaloosa, so that won't show. And a couple other carrying recessive traits. So let's see what the horse looks like. Oh my goodness, and it's a draft, so. Don't get too excited. Now what we do, since it accepted breeding advice, now I'm gonna get even stricter on it. I am sorry for the noise. There be animals in this house. So now we do comparison tests. I have various horses that I can test various uh, um, Generations two. I will test this horse to Twisted Elven. To, if it's as if it tests AGA or as good as Twisted Elven, I will keep this horse as a third generation horse. If not, I will spay this horse and send it to the show horse barn. So let's about as good as. So now what I do is I look at the family tree going. And elf. So I will name this horse Bouncing Elf Three. This this will be a horse that I keep throw into my third generation pasture to breed in a couple months. So now we'll go on to the next horse. That one. Uh, went pretty fast. This one has tiger eye. So it will have, if it wasn't covered with cream, it would have unusual looking eyes. But I'll compare this horse to Twisted Elven. I could compare it to its mom and want it to be superior, but as good as Twisted Elven would be even better than some horses that Mm. 
so this one I'll call speed of stars. If you have any suggestions for better names for these horses, please let me know. I'm just kind of generally quickly going off of the horse and what its parents are. And since these are, their parents are second generations that came out of a second generation pasture, all these foals are third generation horses. So three horses back on their pedigree will be the generic no picture foundation horse. This one has a white gene. This one has white 10. That's why it has its kind of speckly peppery look. Oh, this is, a lot of these foals are from mares I got as gifts from other players. I always love it when gift horses produce breeding horses for me. It makes me feel good. It's like, okay, like it makes, it makes me feel like I'm respecting the gift giver better. Just like, I like it when that happens. It's always sad when I get a gift horse and then I, without thinking about it, I like geld and spay all of its offspring and then I feel a little sad. So I'm getting a lot of as good as horses. Okay, so. I will call this land boomerang bounce because I don't have a word in its mother's name but aside from gift which all which the gift horses have but its grandfather's name is boomerang so i'll call it boomerang bounce three i realize this is probably a boring video i am sorry people um fortunately i don't have that many or fillies to sort through in this group Wipe on poly varnish. Ooh, this will be interesting. It's kind of fun either looking at the genetics and seeing what the horse looks like. Oh, wow. Is this a white three horse? A oh, white one. I didn't realize I had a white one. It's like one thing, like I've not been caring as much about some of the gene, making some of the genes, like just kind of letting genes happen in my line horses, so I get surprises. Okay, this is the jellyfish's horse's baby. Does this one have jellyfish? No, it does not have jellyfish, that is sad. I'm really, like, jellyfish has not been working well passing down into my groups, but that's okay, because I don't really consider myself a fantasy breeder, but still it's like, okay. I guess jellyfish is probably gonna die out soon. Am I concerned about that? I don't even know. But, oh, I should, let's test this one. Again. That horse, there we go. It's AGA. So we have Guardian Springs and Boyne. Bounce three. I'm surprised that all of these seem to be from Boeing and not Silver Ghost. It's kind of confusing. Well, I guess the one Stein we looked at had to have been by Silver Ghost because he had Nexus. So I'm just like, all these villies seem to be from Boeing. Capturing thumbnail, thumbnail acquired. It's a very pretty horse. Oh, by Pride Shark. I think that one had ice, a white ice on it. I should look at these horses more. I'm just used to try not to look at the horse and test them as quickly as possible, but. Huh. So Boeing and Pride Shark, I will call this one rubber. Shark three. So yeah, like, oh my goodness, that like dark red color. This is because of a combination of Sooty Plus D and DP and non-done one. It really creates this 
darker to lighter and then you have the glowing from sweet plus but you still have like really darkness from dense feminine like pretty horse doesn't have done but still pretty horse you don't get this color with done one of the fun things of not being too strict on the color in some lines but all of these horses are testing oh fantasy jeans so what fantasy oh star map this means it's got nexus like just imagining what this horse is going to look like from looking at the thing capturing thumbnail so it's Ooh. there we go like i probably need to get a different benchmark or like testing horse because all these horses are testing aga like at least none of them test superior yet i need to find one horse that I need to like find all these horses that test AGA to Twisted Elven, find one that's test superior than the other, and then use that one which is worse than to then test all of my other mares to and make them have to be superior. I'm gonna and geld them. Like that might be another video. One of these things, like I'm sorry, I'm already an established player. I'm not like starting from scratch, but I'm like, oh. I could do this and this and this, and I need to name this horse. Should I name it and this and this and this? I think I'm gonna name it Dancing Ghost. If I can figure out how to spell ghost. Like, Oh my goodness. And like this, the, this stallion is not one that I produced and, but still like he produces gorgeous foals. It's like, I'm very glad to have been trusted to have him. And like if, it, and he's like a really high Horse, so if a foals do pass bringing advice with him, they're far more likely to pass my comparison with him. Okay. They got Nexus from their dad, like the first letter is from dad, and the second one is from mom. So since he got Nexus from dad, this one has to be another silver ghost foal. Uh, this one is worse. So this one gets spayed. It will be a wonderful, pretty little starry show horse. Now, one thing I do have to, like, I'm asking for, like, feel free to let me know which horses you want to have decorated up for Halloween. I will say that the tack packs and the decorations don't, aside from, like, backgrounds, they don't work on foals. So I can't, like, put foals in costumes, only in adult horses. Foals can only have fancy backdrops to them because they would, oh my goodness. This one will have DP, or Dance Feminine and Sooty Plus. Let's look at it. Two copies of Dance Feminine and two Sooties. Yeah. I love this color. But the problem is I love too many colors. One of the reasons why it's fun to be like, oh, what happened here? Now just watch, this is gonna be the second one to fail, right? Yep. So we'll spay her another gorgeous show horse. And the last one for today has more fantasy jeans. Spot matrix, primary blanket, secondary blanket, poly varnish. Let's see what this one, this is gonna be a loud little horse. Textured coat, 
Ooh. So this one is an Appaloosa. And you see this weird lace pattern? This is Ice Nine, which is a fantasy jean I have. It is a black ice pattern, which I love dark horses. And black ice also like makes the base coat a little bit darker. So I really like Ice Nine as far as fantasy jeans go. This horse is two copies of GP, Glusa Plume, which causes bay or bay based horses to have silver tails growing up. Like, there are some pretty things going here. Like, this really isn't what I would read for Jean Wise, but I've kind of been a lot more lax on my line breeding because I don't really give it as much love as I used to but you know, she's worse than Twisted Elven so I'm gonna yell and spare anyway like some really gorgeous horses but sorry so yeah this was me going through my thing so we ended up with one two three four five Six intact fillies this year, considering the fact that a horse can be in a pasture for 16, 17 years, and the, my pasture holds 60 mares. It's like, okay, this will make like definitely a year that I'll try to make things crowded, but I need to go start looking through and find that. Worse than and superior, the superior fillies, so I can start tightening up my third gen mares even more. That's what I do when things get too crowded. I've got Bouncing Elf, a wonderful Splash M. I, whenever I try to say what the gene is, I always get it wrong. I like Macchiato or Mochiato or Macchiando. Everybody makes fun of me, but very fancy splash gene. I love the dun marking. I love the dapples. Dapples on duns is cool. And it's really fun. It's like, okay, I mainly breed warm bloods, which is the medium type um, artwork in this game. But when, but whenever I do get a draft or light bone horse pop up, it's it's cool. Um, let me see. We got Speed of Stars. She's a Cremello, which is two copies of the Cream Jean. There is Boomerang Bounce. You know, I say I like getting the occasional drafts, and here I am showing you all drafts. It's really funny, though I will promise I do have a lot of warm bloods. Like this one, she has that white 10. It's like, hmm, if I wasn't going off, if I wasn't using their parents' name as things, I'd probably call her salt and pepper. Spring bounce. First warm blood in this list with the white one in the Appaloosa. So like we got just like this line of where she got dipped in sugar. <laughs> Those are all the colts. Rubber shark. That gorgeous red color. I love the mahogany horses. Like, like you can kind of see like glowing dapples. Yeah, I'm that person who wants spots on my non-spotted horses. And Dancing Ghost. Should we got the Nexus going on, which is a fantasy gene. You do, this is not a real thing. If it was, it would be closest to Snowflake, which you could get Snowflake to horses in my herd, but I don't really see it that often because I kind of, like there is, Appaloosa going on, but I don't go for it too much. But yes, yeah, so we've got Nexus going on here. If you get two copies of Nexus, crazy things happen, but it's an incomplete uh, dominant gene where you'll get like half or a little bit of something with one copy and then you'll get crazy stuff happening or in reptile version, a super form of two copies. So 
It's cool. These are our fillings are out of our second gen. So what I do with that is I get these ones and I select them individually on the right there. And I move them to a new barn. I move them to the young barn, which is where I put my future breeders. And then after that, like I'll keep the, as far as the Colts will keep the bee there, be, actually, yeah, I'll keep bee there and I'll move all of the rest of these Colts because bee is best of pasture. Like when I'm looking for my next third gen stallion, he is the one out of all of these studs to look at as far as a future um, sign goes from this group. Those guys and the spade mares and our two geldings are gonna get moved to a show barn. There is plenty of room in this one. So I will move the horses and there we go. That is our second gen pasture for this month. I'll just like look at this guy pretty quick. Oh, he is a pretty one. He does have a fantasy gene, which I have like mixed feelings from having fantasy genes in my studs because I don't want to be a quote unquote fantasy gene breeder. Like I like having fantasy, but that's not my main focus. I don't want to like discriminate against the non-fantasy horses. Real horses are okay too. I say that in a video game and none of these horses are real. But yeah, this guy has some interesting genes going on here. There are some things that I could ask for that he doesn't have, but he has some interesting things going on. I'm kind of sad that he doesn't carry GP. I'll probably add We'll look to see if his mother has it and try to tack that on. Um, which will show if, if I use him as a set, which will show you the gene modification system. But that will be another video. First, I'll need to focus on getting the rest of my pastures out, uh, out of the pastures so the foals do not get deleted on the 28th. But thank you everybody for watching me with Chaos with Second Gen Horses. Let me see if I can stop the recording. Have a good, okay, I find, have a good day guys. See you later, have fun with horses.